I, I didn't have a uh, an intro for this. Why don't you do something pithy, and I'll sit here. I'm and not make... going to do something pithy. I'll let Josh Travolta do something pithy for you. Tokyo Jane. Takara Kanchu Hai. Shin Kankak. All right. And then we could just start now. Well, we've already started now. See how that is? But see, we, we could be two minutes from now, technically, in the video, two minutes in the future. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Okay. Hello. <laughs> a census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> what was that? I could use a hug. Um, I'm Dr. Paul. I'm Diet Dr. Paul. And we are... VR Troopers. We are VR Troopers. Who's the VR Troopers? We are VR Troopers. We are your arbitrators of taste, your guides to to art. I will be your ship up the mountain of Gainus. And uh, this is the Desert Island Institute of Film. For a little while longer. Right. <laughs> Collect them all in like one year's worth of episodes, new ones every Thursday. This is Father and Son, Boomer and Millennial. Um, and we just talk about movies, and we know you do that with your friends and your family. Don't laugh, Harley, and I ain't got time for that shit. All right, goodbye. Um, we appreciate the year that we've had with, with, with folks, and this is, we've been doing a lot of these lately. I like them. Yeah, so. They're fun. It's it, different. If somebody's new to this, what, what, what is it we're going to do? We're doing, well, we've done the sevens, and then we did... So Mount Rushmore was the next, and then I didn't mean to have a mini stroke there. I was trying to make him go in order. <laughs> and then we did uh, Film Fight Club, and then we started doing movie reviews, like instant reviews, and now we're doing The Verdict, which is looking at stuff that's a little bit older, making a call on it once and for all. What kind of movies, just so our friends out there, what kind of movies do we talk about here? Well, last time it was Alien 3, so obviously just erudite films. But... We do all kinds, usually kinds that are polarizing, mm -hmm. that some people may like and some people may, may dislike. In, but that's as far as the verdict goes. But mm -hmm. just in general, I mean, do we talk about only pop culture, you know, comic book films? We talk about everything. Do we? A little bit of everything. Do we? So if, if somebody wanted to come in this and, and, and talk about high art and talk about foreign films, silent films. I mean, I guess films, they wanted to. That's an option. Or... We could talk about Marvel movies. We should do an entire episode of our, our top favorite. On Marvel movies? Silent films. <laughs> I don't think I've seen or, seven silent films. Or, <laughs> that's the problem right there. But I digest. Um, do, 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 breaking news. Breaking news. This just in. This just in, and you'll like this one. So one of your favorite movies is being remastered and re-released in 4K on June the 7th. And that would be Run Lola Run hmm. for the first time coming to a screen near you. Hmm. Now you've watched that. Yes, I've seen And it. you like it. Yeah, it's good. I know you really like it. I though. do, so I do. That's, I just saw it and I was like, you know, I gotta say something. Speaking of foreign films, yes. Now they're, they're people that, that's a very accessible foreign film mm -hmm. for people that like, you know all they do is sit around and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes <laughs> because the the actors are the the main female lead in it she has been in the born identity movie so you may have seen her in that mm -hmm. and then i think that the male lead i've seen him in something else too do you know what would make a great double feature with that movie alien three <laughs> no <laughs> memento i could see that yeah mm -hmm. that's a really interesting double feature mm-hmm because it's got this non-linear storytelling timing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Memento, the cut where it is all in chronological order? Yeah, it's a to totally different experience than to, you know, being going back and forth. I'm and sure it's stuff. just a cut and dry story at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's interesting. My uh, breaking news, and did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? No, that was it. Okay, my breaking news, um, and it is 
all over the interweb. And it is they have released even more sort of uh, shots of the from the new Superman movie. <laughs> It's a no, it's it looks like I'm all for this. There's the scene that they show is him in his bedroom and he's got his Superman pajamas on. And it's like he's, super pajamas, it's a suit. No, those are pajamas. No, that's his suit. Those are his pajamas. And it looks like it's a fleece pullover from North Face that's <laughs> dirty. It's two sizes too big. How is it not even skin tight on him? Listen, how is it not the S Superman not skin tight? That's how you know it's his pajamas. Okay, because they, super jammies. they don't have to be indestructible because clearly Ma Kent could not have taken a blanket out of the spaceship because that's really the origin of the, of the of It the looks costume. like they made that super suit out of the inside of that no, spaceship. No, they took the blanket that he was wrapped in in the spaceship and she unraveled it and she made his 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 costume. So he, she couldn't have done that with something like that. Those were his pajamas. And I'm all for showing the side no, of Superman. Not. Yeah, it's they pajamas. are. It has to be. No, that's it his suit. No, it's but I have a pair that I have a I honestly have a pair and I can go downstairs and get it right now that looks almost like that. Yeah, but that's his suit. It's fuzzy. It's, All he needs is a little <laughs> a little blanky. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it looks stupid. No, it's it, not. It, because it, first of all, it's high neck kind it, of stuff. It that's his suit, my boy. Why would he release that at all? It first of all, it was just a dumb picture to do anyway. Why would you release a picture of him sitting down like that? It's just a, it's not, whether you like the suit or not, it's not a becoming He's image or sitting down setting. on the side of his bed, getting ready to say his evening prayers and go to Su sleep. Super nappies. <laughs> yes. His super baba. <laughs> Mama, come say little Kenty to bed. Are you looking forward to the movie? I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking for them rebooting that DC. Boy, that's a gloomy place. <laughs> just full of emo kids and Ezra Miller just bat fleck. I mean, Poor decision after poor decision. All you got to do is go back to the 70s. If you want to see the greatest comic book I mean, movie he, he ever is. made. He's the best Superman by far. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. And he didn't need no super padding in his super suit or a fleece super suit. <laughs> Take notes, James Gunn. What do you think? Okay. Yes. Okay. Tell our viewers, this is going to do an, a, an episode of The Verdict. What, uh, what are we talking about? Movie, movie maker. Today we're talking about an actor. Oh. Acting. Yes. And that would be John Travolta. Is that the first film that you go to when you think about John Travolta? Uh, it's simultaneously three movies, but it would be that would be one of them. It'd be that Grease and probably Pulp Fiction. And it's the the part where he's got his jacket and he like turns to the side and like he's like awkwardly like, "Where do I go?" That's yeah, that, yeah, just yeah. rent free right here. You know, we've got this cadre of film artists that all kind of remind me of the same. Mm -hmm. And and we've been talking about like you got John Cusack, you you have uh, Bruce Willis, you have Steven Seagal, you have have uh, uh, John Travolta, and they all have. If you look at the, if you chart their success, you've got these real immense high points, and then you have a lot of other stuff that's sort of mid tier, and then stuff that's like, oh my goodness, what's the deal? As opposed to when I think of somebody like a. Um, uh, Gene Hackman or Dustin Hoffman. I can't think of a bad movie they ever made. I used to say that that Michael Caine has never made a bad uh, movie. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, I mean, they're, they're Jodie Foster, for crying out loud. We're just thinking about like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah, he did some teen stuff when he was younger, but he got yeah. to a, a part in his career and it's like he's the same thing. So what is this? What do you think that this is, is because of ego? Do you think it's they've stepped on Hollywood? We talked about John Cusack and that he apparently had stepped on some Hollywood toes and they've sort of, nobody will go near him anymore. Do you think it, they're aging out? Do you, what is it? They just, I mean, why is it? I think it? it's a combination of factors, but I think one thing that we tend to forget is that these are artists. And even though they may look like 
a businessman on screen. A lot of them are art artists when when like to the max of that. So they they tend to be quirky people, a little bit weirder, and so they they just don't process life the same way. So they maybe they aren't looking for the same things in script, and I think we forget that a little bit. So we're just dealing with people that I think are prone to high highs and low lows, just because of the type of temperament that you see in, in very creative people on, on average. Would you put Mel Gibson in that group? Yes. And then and there's another aspect, right? You have drugs and alcohol and mental health and things like that. Travolta is a perfect example because he's had this stuff where people have questioned his sexuality in the, in the news and he got spooked by South Park. His son died. He had to deal with that. His wife is a A-list celebrity. He's dealt with that a long career. So you have tons of things that you can... Yeah. Point to, to it's just, you know, why is your career done one of these? His particularly, it's easy, I think, to yeah. look at stuff and say, well, this could have been, and this could have been, and that could have been. Yeah. I, I just, I, I it, it disturbs me sometimes, like why somebody can do the kind of things, the high points, and then, you know, is it the agent? You know, you have an agent that's just saying, hey, you should really try this. It's going to be a great film. And how do you, how do you know? What, what what the quality of a film is based on a, just a script. Yeah. That's got to be tough. Do you think it's hard after you've had loser, 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 that, that then nobody wants to give you a winner because mm-hmm. they think that you're going to turn the audience away? Or, and maybe you get to a point in your career where you feel like you're too big to do some certain levels of things, so you That's constantly go after schlocky, big budget or higher budget stuff that just looks good yeah. on script. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we usually start off with the good. What the good. What What would you say is the good? Well, because I can't. You've mentioned something for a while that I'm thinking you're going to put in the good, and yeah. Well, first to start with, his films are a surprisingly big part of my childhood. In particular, I put "Look Who's Talking" and "Grease" because those were movies that I used to see quite often as a kid. So he's in big parts in both of those films. And so he's just kind of been around. You can also maybe even say like Saturday Night Fever or Pulp Fiction as well. So he's, he played a big part in my childhood. So I have fond memories of him. But uh, um, aside from that, I'll say that he's probably one of the few actors that's a triple threat, a true triple threat. He can sing, he can act, and he can dance, boy. Have you seen the Christmas commercial that he did this year? No, but I saw it on his IMDb page. Yeah. Did you know that after Saturday Night Fever, he did another dance movie called Staying Alive? Mm -hmm. He directed it. Yeah. No, no, no. Stallone directed it. It was something real weird, but it just like... And Sylvester Stallone does a cameo in it. It's how... It's a story of Tony, and now he's finally going to get to Broadway. Okay. I didn't realize that that was a whole thing. Mm -hmm. And Stallone, that was... Yeah, he was behind the camera. And yeah, and they have like a cameo where they're walking down the street, and they're kind of like, look at each other kind of thing. So. <laughs> What'd you say, Tony? <laughs> Did you say cut or action? We now return to Tony Danza and Sylvester Stallone in what? <laughs> what well, about that's, you? Is, well, you know, you kind of, I would start it with Saturday Night Fever. Mm-hmm. That's the movie that made him a star. Yeah, yeah. Well, because he did was, some stuff before that, but that was what, like... Have you seen that movie? It's for free on uh, on Amazon Prime right now. Yes, I watched it this past week. You talk about some... I've seen it. Say, how many times have you seen it? Three or four times. Yeah, it is... I didn't realize that, that the, the friend dies at the end. I didn't realize that. Because I don't. I remember seeing it when we were young, when I was younger. Mm-hmm. You introduced it because you would talk about the pizza. I was like, oh, we got to watch this. And I saw it. And for being a younger teenager and seeing that movie, I enjoyed it more than I thought. But it was never something that I was like itching to get back to but it's oh, a it's, good movie it's an it's a love letter to new york it's a no, slice of, of time is. and a place mm-hmm. it actually it actually does scratch the same bone that like godfather does it really was there are movies that were just sort of cultural icons that i don't know that last time i went to the movies it felt like okay i'm watching something that i'm going to be people are going to be talking about 10 20 years from now when you went to saw saturday night fever or the exorcist or the godfather kind of stuff you knew you know write this down I'm seeing something that's that's just different, and and it really was star making turn. And of course, you know, before that, I would put in this thing is Welcome Back, Cotter. You know, he it was a TV show, and he was you know like, right. kind of you know it's a sitcom kind of stuff. And you could see even if you go back and watch the episodes, the greatness that's that's there. His, he has a presence 
of how he commands a room, how he commands a, a, a scene, even as a, you know, kind of the goofball character that he, that he was. You, you, I would, you know, put Pulp Fiction in there. Um, Carrie, I even though... I at the same year as Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, it was, uh, Carrie was a much smaller role, but you could see. But again. he was very important still. Yeah. Um, but two of the movies that are my favorite John Travolta films are two of the lowest rated on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was shocked by that. And that is Phenomenon and Michael. And especially Phenomenon, because Phenomenon is one of my fa all-time favorite movies. I put that on there for his like his best stuff. That's probably one of them that's in there. It really is. It's magical. And if there's a takeaway on this, one of the things we like to do is, is turn people on to something that uh, I've never seen that. I wouldn't ever. What? Saturday Night. What? Isn't that a TV show on every Saturday night? No. Saturday Night Fever, Saturday Night Live. Um, turn you on to something. I, yeah. Saturday Night Live is brilliant. It is a piece of film history. Saturday Night Fever. Fever. But um, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> but Phenomenon is really a heartwarming, magical story, a fantasy story. I would put it in the same category as something like Field of Dreams. If you watch the trailer for Phenomenon, it'll make you want to watch the movie really badly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that trailer being out yeah. when I was a kid. And then more recently, In the Valley of Vengeance with Ethan Hawke. Mm -hmm. I thought he was uh, like, wow, Travolta mm -hmm. is back. Yeah. So he's got quite a, that's just the top tier. Mm -hmm. Do you have a mid tier? Or? Well, I, I have, this is a good thing when we talk about his, he's an iconic actor, I think, you know, obviously with Pulp Fiction and Get Shorty and, and Saturday Night Fever, but he has a, quite a number of his films and maybe while also an extension of him making an impression on me as a childhood is that he has a lot of guilty pleasure movies for me. That's a good yeah. So one of his lowest, lowest rated films is Battlefield Earth. And I'm sorry, everyone wants to murder me right now. <laughs> it's so bad. It is so bad. But it's Forrest Whitaker and him doing British accents as like these seven foot. Forrest Whitaker from, 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 from Phenomenon. Yeah. They both speak like this, but they're British accents. And they, it's the stupidest. You sound like Miss Piggy. Yeah. Well, kind of what really was. If I'll play Miss Piggy next to Travolta as the dude from Battlefield Earth, and they sound the same. I'll put it right here. You're not going to be disappointed. Kami, you are out of your little green mind. I was being trained to conquer galaxies. But yeah, but it's there's something about it. I remember we saw that movie in the theaters. I remember you looked at the the uh, in the newspaper because we'd be should be three four stars was the big one what the star rating was for this. And I remember you doing an audible sigh out loud because I asked you, what's the star rating? And you said, oh, it's a half a star. <laughs> <laughs> and you were genuinely like sad that, that you saw it because I think you saw what everybody else saw. Oh, Travolta in an action movie about aliens. Oh, sh Nikes, it's a half a star. That's not good. Shortly after that, my therapist, um... <laughs> and I, we spent we spent years trying to recover from deconstructing that. that. <laughs> Are you forgetting that I was a professional twice over, an analyst and a therapist, the world's first analrapist? Yes, and you were almost arrested for those business cards. Yes, no, it did not look good. Movie. I'm sure you just erased it from your mind. I I, I just remember lying in fetal position, just shuddering. Uh -huh. wah, wah, wah. Uh -huh. It's not the worst. There's other ones that I enjoy for that are. Uh, guilty pleasures swordfish with hugh jackman mm -hmm. very 90s movie uh there's a movie called savages which it's just a super kind of gory movie uh, and then there's another one it's one of the more more recent ones that i think was like one of the last movies that he did other than in the valley of violence it's called from paris with love with uh john reese myers the younger one where he's like a secret agent he's just really over the top and they paint him as the villain in it, but he's really not the villain. It's just kind of like a, a, a run-of-the-mill action movie, but he's, he's good in it. And so I don't know, he's, he's, there's this, just this line with him for me where he's in movies that aren't all that great, but I just kind of like them. He does have a very wide and varied, you know, it's a buffet mm -hmm. of film roles, you know? Oh, yeah. You got the salad and you got the bread and you got the meat and you got the, here are the vegetables kind of stuff, the cold, the hot, um, as opposed to some performers it's like every single movie is the same will ferrell for example um i would put in mid-tier is urban cowboy um yeah, yeah i, I, I didn't that. you know grease 
I, I know that how important that was culturally. I know every song in that. You can thank my it, sister. It didn't. It, it didn't work for me. At Nicole's wedding, singing word for words of those song on the. I mean, I'm telling you. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, Sandy, <laughs> staying alive, face off. You didn't mention that. Face. Well, those, those are other ones. Blowout. Too. You know, which I believe is a Criterion disc. Grand Broken Palma. Arrow. Um, yes. Get Shorty. <laughs> you know that my babysitter took me to see that. Which was your grandfather. Which, which was, yes, which was your <laughs> wife's father. The first 28 words in that are the F word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm. look how you turned Grandpa. out. Grandpa! <laughs> um, my last movie on the mid-tier, which I don't know that you, you saw, but it is, you talk about guilty pleasure, I'm surprised it's as despised as it's because I am Wrath. And it was filmed in Columbus, Ohio. With... What's his face? Jason Statham? Uh, or no, that's Wrath. That's yes. Wrath. No, no, okay. no. This is I Am Wrath. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that This one. actually, the story of this movie is it was originally, William Friedkin was set to direct and Nick Cage was, go you know, that would be another one. Well, Nick that, Cage the is first really... name on my list when I started thinking about the verdict was Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And uh, so for whatever reason, Cage bowed out and Friedkin uh, bowed out. So right there from, from the get-go, you think, oh, they, it is a compelling story kind of kind of deal. I thought it was really good. I liked it because, of course, it's a, you know, when you watch a movie that's made in your hometown and it's like, oh, my goodness, oh, I recognize that corner or mm -hmm. that liquor store kind of kind of stuff. But it's more than that. It really is. It's, it's like more recently his films have been misses. And I would put... In the Valley of Vengeance and uh, I Am Wrath, more recent but good movies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree. What about the bad? Well, something happened to my man, and kind of like Cusack and 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 who else we've discovered. Something happened, but it's worse. It's to to a worse degree than what we've seen, and it sort of culminated with. And I don't know how I even got halfway through the damn movie, but I tried to watch Fanatic. Which the only people that this movie will appeal to are people that are my age exactly, give or take a couple of years. If you're not, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, there's nothing about this film that should appeal to you. First of all, it's, it's Travolta and he's unrecognizable, but it's directed by Limp Biscuit, Fred Durst. You have that angle. You mentioned this yes. the other day. It, it stars a side, uh, 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 you know, on the opposite side of Travolta is Devin Sawa from, mm -hmm. uh, what's the name of the movie? It was the Final Destination. Final Destination. Well, he's Casper. a grown-up action actor now with muscles, and he's the bad guy. So there's these '90s aspects, but it's a it's about a, a mentally handicapped guy or a guy who's not. He's got a low IQ, um, and he's just a big fan of this actor. And he just he just wants an autograph. That's the premise of the movie. But of course, Devin Sow is a bully, and he doesn't want to give this guy an autograph, even though he's obviously handicapped. And so it's just it's, it's a stupid movie. It, it's not. Though it's it's not like super technically bad, it's just kind of a why movie. It doesn't make sense, and you wonder what made him want to do the movie. It just it, it made me feel bad watching really? it because I see a guy who's trying. I don't see like uh, Dennis Quaid's brother Randy right now with a you know looking like a crazy person. He seemed all there. He just for whatever reason it's the wrong roles. I don't know. But he just yeah. can't hit, he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. You know, I think there's sometimes there are movies, it's too easy. Movies are just bad because they were money grabs. I don't know, maybe um, alimony or paid <laughs> back taxes or something. So you just do it to get, it used to be actors could do this and they could go and do films in Europe. Mm -hmm. And American audiences would never see it and they got their paid. We've blurred the audience. It's international now and with, with streaming. So there's no way you can hide making a deliberate bad movie. For me, in the bottom feeder category, is when a movie was really supposed to be a good movie and it just was horrible. And for me, the top of Travolta's filmography in that category is Wild Hogs. Oh, Wild Hogs is unwatchably bad. Oh, and it's, it's cast, a bunch of great cast, Ray Liotta in there. That is a terrible piece of paper. Yeah. That's just like the worst things of film right there. Yeah. And who's it made for? It's a it's a kids movie for adults, which is the dumbest part about that film. You want to know what else is sad? Seen it more than once. Uh, me too. Well, I can I, I'll raise you that. I actually went to the town and toured the locations where they filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who did that to you? <laughs> Heather and I did. Oh, dear goodness. We were, and that's not, no, it just, we were in town. I was there for a workshop. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we, Wild Hogs was, was filmed here. And oh, it's third here's of the bar, another state. You know, and here's a, and here's the, the hitching post where, you know, and this is where one of the cast members urinated. And so, yeah, it was. Yeah, I put that at the top of my list too. Uh, the Punisher taking of Pelham 1 2, uh, 1 2 3. This is a movie that, a lot of people like that I don't like too. Michael, it just used to get on my nerves. It's on my top tier. Yeah, it just gets on my 39, nerves. 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. What was wrong with that? That's not very good. I know. This just in. On Rotten Tomatoes. No, it was on my top tier. Phenomenon at 46, 49, and Michael at 36. Yeah. I don't get it. I just, I, for whatever reason, I don't, just not a movie that you don't I enjoyed. like fantasy th you don't like anything that has to do with spirituality no and that's not it see that's a different movie that that, that kind of like it's about spirituality but it's not like directly about religion they sort he of will watch you any it. movie with a crazy haunted nun, I saw it but you, how many times how many times am I supposed to watch it I don't know how many times have you did you cry during the the recent Exorcist movie just once how many times you've seen it just once I've not seen it again. Are you gonna see it again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're not sure. gonna see Michael. I like that movie though. Yeah, Power of Darkness and the Power of Light. So, no, I thought it was a great movie. Has a dog in it. <laughs> Has a dog in it? Yeah. Check. <laughs> so it is in the Valley of Vengeance or Violence or whatever. I, I, yeah, it's a, you put a dog in Travolta, it's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I guess the question should be though, um, can he resurrect his career again? Because you've already resurrected his career one time with Pulp Fiction. People forget that. That's right. That's right. And there are people who say that he, he was given this gift and he squandered it. But did he squander it? That's what I want to... I, I, don't, I don't know. Did he squander it? Because I don't feel like he didn't take time off. He didn't become a crazy person in the public. So I just wonder what the deal was, you know. Or maybe he just is unable to pick the pro proper projects anymore. Yeah, I think to be an actor, you got to be a little bit crazy to begin with. And how, you know, it's like you're driven by what people think of you. And you want to hit, you want to hit, you want to hit. And, and it's like a drug. Once you have one hit, you got to have another hit. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's a dangerous, I don't know, never, I mean, I lived in L.A. <clears throat> but, you know, what I know just from reading, like everybody else, is that it's a cruel town. They chew you, they spit you up. You're, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what Cusack has said is that how they treat people as they age and everything is about youth and, you know, and beauty and, how, and the, the yardstick for women is different from men and sexual exploitation, both of men and women. So I don't know. It, it, it's a, you take a, a sick system, potentially sick system, and you put fragile people in it that are successful and then it doesn't, you know, that's why somebody like, like, um, with the director, with, um, um, you just mentioned his name, um, with resurrected Travolta's career. Oh, uh, um, Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Yeah. Tarantino always gives me the impression is like, he doesn't care what you think and what the system says. I mean, they just, he just canceled his 10th movie that he was planning on, on, on making. He's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel it. Um, Why did he do that? Well, somebody said, you know, that they, uh, some uh, par partial script was released kind of stuff and for whatever reason. And he don't play with that. Yeah. He's done that before where yeah. he's gotten rid of a film he's been working on because mm -hmm. the script got released. Yeah. And so that's the kind of thing. You got to have that just screw you kind of attitude. And I think that's really hard. It's like, yeah, but I need the money or this might be my chance or I can, I can, I can bring honor and distinction to this role. So. And maybe that's it. Maybe it's that he's like, well, I've done it before. Maybe I can do it again. So it's like he's just going to keep beating his head against the wall until he breaks through in his mind. Maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. Well, what's the verdict? A veteran actor of nearly 100 films with a career that spans over half a century. John Travolta is an actor who has truly seen and done it all when it comes to the silver screen. One of the few actors outside the golden age of cinema or Broadway that is a true triple threat. He established himself early as one of the best singers and dancers in his acting cohort. 
Roles in films like Saturday Night Fever and Grease cemented his status early on as an actor with great potential and immense on-screen likability, quickly becoming one of the most sought-after names in cinema. Unfortunately, the 80s were far less prosperous for John Travolta than the previous decade, because by the time the 1990s rolled around, big-time projects were few and far between. Luckily, fate seemed to smile on our protagonist, as he'd catch the eye of Hollywood's newest wonderkind, Quentin Tarantino. Determined to see Travolta's next role yield far more bang than whimper, he cast him as the lovable mafia crony Vincent Vega in 1994's cult hit Pulp Fiction. And everyone lived happily ever after. The end. Or at least that's what would have happened in a perfect world, but unfortunately that's just not the case. After once again reaching the precipice of Hollywood, Travolta would again see a monumental fall from grace over the next 15 years or so, as the quality of his releases began to visibly falter, further slipping into obscurity. Now reduced to starring in low-effort commercials that shamelessly spoof his earlier career, and D-tier independent films that lack any real imagination. Finding some semblance of causality in the downward trajectory of his career can be just as difficult as pinpointing the genesis of the destruction itself. So how exactly did this happen? Again, you know, for the second time. I'm not sure that there is an answer, or at least one that leads to any real resolution. I am certain that the only thing my brain is capable of stuttering and stammering out is references to tortured roller coaster metaphors and hackneyed career advice from the one person underqualified to give it. A more apt question would be, does he have enough left in the tank to pull off a second comeback? The future remains an enigma, but one thing is certain, with his obvious talent and undeniable charm, he's always worth keeping an eye on. John Travolta's importance to me in my life as a film fan far outweighs his ability as an actor. But that's okay. While I do think he should be more selective with his work, I don't think he can hurt the public's perception any further. So at this point, if he's happy doing these types of projects, then so be it. Who am I to judge? But here's to hoping it's far more Saturday Night Fever and less, well, Battlefield Earth. The Verdict. Hmm. I think he's a talented actor. Like I said, he's a triple threat. And I think his importance to me and my life as like a fan of film outweighs his current sort of stature and where he's at now. If that makes sense. It does. And I'm hopeful that we'll see him in greener pastures, but I don't know that he's going to make those decisions. It seems as though he's just kind of in the same groove right now, just doing what he's doing, because he's not slowed down. He's made, still making movies, still making them pretty quickly, and, you know, he'll surprise with some decent ratings every now and then, but... That's exactly... I mean, you're in, a, in total agreement. I mean, the way I was thinking about it is it's a hung jury. Mm -hmm. There's not enough evidence to say, to convince the judge that he is one of our greatest or he is his best days are behind him. Mm -hmm. And I think one of two things have to happen. One is we need another reboot, the mm -hmm. same way what we did with Tarantino. Mm -hmm. Or we need to take Travolta, John Cusack, Steven Seagal, Nick Cage, Bruce Willis, and put them in a film together. I'm not talking and expendables. Set it on fire? No. <laughs> I'm talking about something that totally goes against type and character. I'm talking about, think about the, that group of folks. Travolta, Cusack, Segal, mm -mm, Mystic River. Think about something like that. Oh, or Copland that. With, with that, that with Stallone did. Something that was totally, it's a serious film. It's a dramatic film. It's, there's no action in it at all. There's no quirky one lines. It's all character and heart driven. And the, you know, it's all about interrelationships. He needs to be in another Tim Tarantino movie. Well, that, that's what was my first thought as somebody who resurrect his, his... Yeah, maybe Tarantino's a right guy because Tarantino just wouldn't play the cheese. He wouldn't make it cheesy and he needs to stay away from that. All right. I agree. His great, his movies though. I mean, I tell you, I will watch phenomenon Iconic. every time. I I will watch the Saturday Night uh, Fever over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, he he has he has it's it, you know, he's got some charisma. very good movies and quite a few of them. Yeah, and enough to, I think to keep you away from the bad stuff to not even worry have to worry about all that. You know, I think if we didn't have direct to video, 
and we didn't have streaming, all of those folks that we talked about, their careers would be viewed differently. Yeah. You blame the Nobody's internet. forcing them. It's your fault. It's not their fault. It's it is. Their, it's, it's your fault. It's I'm not. talking to you. Get me started. They'll kick your ass. They will. The internet is a cold and harsh place. Yeah. I didn't say it. Yeah. So we've come to the end um, of another episode. Another father-son, mano y mano moment. Mm -hmm. So was it good for you? Slightly less painful than the last time. <laughs> Anything you want to say to our friends out there? Give, give the internet a big hug. No, but I got another movie recommendation. Oh, boy. Another horror Seriously, movie. Seriously, I'm, I, I'm... I do have another one. I know. I'm not making fun. I mean, I love your recommendations. Oh. Other than Alien 3. Sarcastic over here. No. no. This was the one that I just watched a couple days ago, and uh, I think that there's a misconception that PG-13 horror movies can't be good because they're usually made for teenagers, and this is one that I totally disagree with. It's from 2019, and it's called The Vigil. It is a haunted house possession film, but with Judaism as opposed to Christianity, but it doesn't fall into any of those traps that you see where it's, you know, hackneyed. It's completely different than anything you've ever seen. Super stylized, but not like in an over-the-top way. Some of the best sound design I've ever seen. Well, not ever seen, that I've seen probably this year. Would you say it's some of the best sound design you've ever heard? <laughs> <laughs> Two great performances by Dave Davis, and then there's an older woman, I forget her name, that just nails it. But it's about a guy who um, is asked to shomer for a deceased person, which if you're not Jewish, you would know what that means. That means that when you someone dies of the Jewish faith, someone needs to watch over their body until they're buried to just to pray over it, I guess, to, to be there and protect it from it's, you know, you're dead, your spirit's, I guess, not safe at this point. So that the idea is you just sit there and you wait and you do it in blocks of five, six, seven hours and you take turns. So sometimes if families don't have friends or relatives, they'll pay someone. So this is the guy who's paid to come into this house and show her for this, this fella. Hmm. It's unique. And we always say that movies, something, I want to see something new and something different. What's it called again? The Vigil. And where did you see this? It at? is on Prime. Okay. With mm -hmm. commercials? No, no commercials. Hmm. And I know how you are about your sensibilities. Uh, so it, it's not the same overtly religious angle that they take, even though obviously it's about religion, but it, it was just very refreshing. And I, I highly, highly recommend. Super good. A couple jump scares, some good atmosphere in there. Yeah. Some, some great acting, great acting, great sound design. Sounds... Super short, sweet, hour and a half long. Bam, good. Bam. All right. Well, you heard it here first. All right. So make sure you like us, subscribe to us, um, all of those those things. Send us money in the mail. Yeah, just tell your <laughs> tell your friends and uh, uh, about it. And um, we are now at one year, moved on to our moving into our second year here. Thank you for your loyalty, all the folks that are are out there. Uh, love your feedback, ideas, that kind of stuff. We appreciate it, and uh, we will see you at the movies. Yes.